All right, in this video we are going to cover data wrangling in R and two of the foundational packages that you're going to be using to wrangle data or clean data or pull part data and you know help you analyze subsets of the data. You'll be using tidier and deeper. You know, depending on who you ask, you might pronounce that differently. Um, so we're going to be diving into those and in this video specifically, we're just going to be talking about this one, tidier data. So let's go ahead and look at what that means to have tidy data. So if we see right here, tidy data is a foundation for wrangling in R. And basically it has a, a few rules that it follows. And it says in a tidy data set, each variable is saved in its own column, and each observation is saved in its each row, uh, in its own row. So surprisingly, there are a lot of data sets that don't follow these rules. And because of that, it makes it really hard to analyze those data sets. And so we want to make sure that we can put the data sets in the right form so that we can analyze uh, vectorized data. And when I say vectorized data, I mean that it's like in columns. Because when you put something in a data frame, a data frame is basically each column is a vector and it's tied together into a single object and it makes it a lot easier to analyze. So let's go ahead and dive in and we're going to be looking at how to gather, um, use the gather function and use the separate function and the unite function. We won't go over the spread function because I'm pretty sure by the end of going through these three functions you'll know how to learn this last function. So let's go into the actual code. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to get rid of Diplo right there. And I'm just going to click Command Enter so I have the library included. And again, these rules, each variable in the data set is in its own column. Each observation is in its own row. And here's a third rule as well. Each value is placed in its own cell. So that means, you know, what we're going to go over later is like if if gender is in the same cell as a name. You know, sometimes data sets are built in funny ways and we want to correct that. So first let's start with gather. So do question mark gather, pull up the documentation. So it takes multiple columns and collapses into key value pairs. And that's very important. Um, the key value pair is basically it you're, you're letting R know how to match up certain values with each other. So if we come here, let's look at messy data one. I'm going to call it a data frame. And if you're following along in the web, feel free to just kind of pause the video, type this up. But we are going to run that. And if you look down here, got the data, messy one. Okay, so you need to look at this data and ask yourself, what's wrong with this data and why is it not tidy? So you can go through these questions, each variable. So it is each variable in the data set placed in its own column. So it kind of looks like it has some columns, but it has numbers all across here. And we're not really sure what these number rep numbers represent right now. So is each observation placed in its own row. So it looks like Wilbur with A is here, Wilbur with B is here, this value. And so there's more than one observation in a single row. And that's going to be a problem. Now in this data set so far, we don't have any uh, multiple values in a, in a single cell. So we're good with that. We'll cover that later. So let's see what happens if we try and plot this. If you look over here, it doesn't really know what it's trying to compare. You'll see it's it's looking at correlations between name and A and name and B. It doesn't really know what these values A, B, and C are. So let's go ahead and look at that page again. This is basically what the data looks right looks like right now. It's considered wide data, like a wide river. Um, it's not exactly, uh, it's not, we're not able to analyze it like we want. And from knowledge, kind of uh, business expert knowledge, we know that this is heart rate. We wouldn't 
really been able to find that out on our own. Um, and that's kind of, kind of the problem with messy data is sometimes it doesn't indicate what these values represent down here. So let's go ahead and, and overwrite this data frame that we made up here. And let's call it gather, or I mean, let's call it messy one and use the function gather. And the first argument, if we were reminded, let's go back here, is the data. So messy one. And the second is the key. So we're going to say drug. And basically what you're saying here is that these columns up here, this is your key right here that you want to separate it into. So you're putting an anchor with all of these values are associated with A and with B, all these values are associated with B. And so this is the key and you're creating the new column called heart rate. And so this is going to be the value. And then you're going to list which ones you want it to affect. So key, value, and then dot, 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 meaning what columns do you want to apply this to. So let's go ahead and run it so you know what I'm talking about. So if we see here, Wilbur A67. And it goes through with each drug and each heart rate. And suddenly this data set makes sense because it's more tidy. So if we scroll up here and look at these ground rules, uh, we ask ourselves these questions again. Is each variable in the data set in its own column? Okay, each variable, yes, name, drug, heart rate, they are all separated into their own columns. Each observation in its own row. So Wilbur with A is at 67. Wilbur with B is at 56. So yes, each row, each observation, has its own uh, row. So this is what we want and this means you know we can analyze it a lot better now. We can kind of see some a box plot and an R. Look I didn't even specify what type of plot I wanted. Just because of the way it was recently organized it suddenly knew how to display it. And this column, this heart rate column, wasn't even available with this original data set up here. So we couldn't have broken it out into those numbers and to see the spread of the name and the heart rate that they have with each associated drug. So let's go ahead and make a new, uh, a new data frame. It's going to be very similar. We're going to call it messy2 and we're going to make it a data frame. And if you notice here, we're doing something a little bit different. I'm saying Wilbur underscore M meaning he's male, Petunia underscore F, female, Gregory underscore M, meaning he's a male. So what problem are we facing here? Let's go back to this documentation. So we're going to look at separate one column into several. So this is what we're using, separate. So if you notice, like the problem is that there's name and gender in the same column. Let's run that. Oh, I already did that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and look at it. So name has two values in it. It has a name and a gender. And we want to be able to separate those so we can analyze it better. So let's overwrite messy2, call it separate. And again, here, let's pull up the documentation for that. Uh, it's going to take the data and it's going to take the column that you want to look at. Whatever column has the dual values going on, that's what you're looking at. And then, see here it says into. Well, into names of new variables to create a, as character vector. So right here, we're using the combine function since we're referring to multiple values. We have a name, column, and we want to split it out into name and gender. And then finally, we got to tell it how to look for uh, the dual meaning, the dual values in the column. So in this instance, there is an underscore separating them. So we're telling R, go look at messy data, look at the name column, and I want you to prepare two columns and split the values at the separator, the underscore. So let's go ahead and look at that. 
and I, I haven't run this yet. I skipped over this. We haven't done that yet. Um, so now we have name, we have gender, but now the same problem as we had up here, it is still messy data because it is wide data and there are multiple observations in each row. So let's go ahead and run this now. This is the same function that we used up top. All right, there we go. So now we know who is who and the drug rate, that the, the heart rate that they had with each observation. So this isn't a, this isn't a perfect example of the data set because we could go on and we could say, okay, when we analyze the data, now we're gonna have multiple, like if we try and analyze the gender, we'll have more males than there actually were uh, you know, but in the end it'll all even out because we basically duplicated all males and females. So it'll be okay. Lastly, let's look at this unite function. So we're pasting together multiple columns into one. So if we look here, we're going to create another data set, messy three. We're going to call it a data frame. And we have first name, again, with the gender within the first name column. So we're gonna to have to fix that. Last name, Smith, Gordon, Jones, and the drug information here. So right off the bat, we have this column again. It's wide, it has multiple values in here in a single cell. And we wanna get first name and last name in the same cell. That's what we're after here. But first, let's clean it up a little bit before we do that. So let's use the gather function again, same code as above. So now we've split that out, and so each observation is on its own row. Now let's use the separate. Again, we're looking at first name, this time instead of just name. First name, separator is the underscore. Okay, so now we have first name, gender, last name, drug, heart rate. And now we want to unify, I mean unite, uh, the first name and the last name column. So let's go ahead and look at that documentation. Oh, we've already got it pulled up. Uh, so we're going to pass it in our data frame and what column we want it to combine into. So if we use unite messy, that's the data we're, we're sending it. And we're, we're naming the column here. So we're going to say we want to name that column full name. That's the change. And then we're going to point to the specific column on, as the index. So first column here, and then third column right here. And in between those two values, we want a space. Let's combine that, see what happens. So now we have full name, gender, drug, heart rate, with a space in between, and it looks good, and it looks like it's ready to analyze. Now let's look to see if we, if we didn't add that space. Kind of did some funky stuff. So we gotta make sure to add. Oh, it's because I already ran it on the data earlier and so I'm, I'm rerunning the function and it's not liking that. All right, so there we are. We have, like I said, these columns and it's now uh, functioning according to what we want. And if we want to change it back to what it was, uh, spreading out the data. I know we said we wouldn't go over this, but we're not going to talk about it much. It's just, it's this spread rows into columns. Um, we're basically going to change it back to what it was. And in this case, it's not what we want because we can't analyze it as effectively when we do that. But just be aware, some, uh, some data sets will need to be spread because they may be tall instead of wide. So in that case, you'll want to spread it out and get, uh, that's mostly an, an issue when there's not um, a single variable in, what, what's that first one up here? Each variable in the data set is placed in its own column. So that's when you, you would probably use spread. So thanks for watching. Hope this helps make more sense of the tidier data uh, package.